So I uh, bumped into this guy in the forest. Uh, just here in Pleithops. We're just about to go to the beach. This is beautiful little overlook that I know of that uh, you, you've not seen it before, have you, mate? No, just pictures. I'll show him this beautiful little spot and then we'll stick around for the sunset. What do you think to this fog that's just come in? Really? Fog? So we, we've hit the beach. It's only a, a two minute walk from the car park and it's bright, bright sun and fog all at the same time, which is absolutely perfect. We should get some cool atmospherics when we're up on the hill looking down across all of this glowing fog. But also, I mean, if, if it continues up into the hill where we're gonna climb up, there's lots of cool trees along this coastline. And so if we can get some backlit fog blasting into some interesting trees, then we might get some lovely light rays. So it's quite, quite promising but you can't even see the hill well you might be able to see this kind of dark smudge so that's the hill that we're going to be climbing over there and once we're on the top of that i hope and suspect that we'll be above this fog and looking out across the beach and you'll see the whole curve of the beach and then the mountains in the distance that's the hope we'll see i think it'll i think it'll work Adam just said, I wonder why it doesn't get like this on the east coast of the island where we live. And I think, and I'm probably wrong, but I think it's because of this cold Pacific air that comes in from the west and hits the warm coastline. Then that temperature differential creates all of this, this fog. Might be totally wrong. <laughs> That's my theory anyway. Good. It sounds all right, doesn't it? It does. What are, you, uh, what are you shooting with today, mate? Well, this is a, a Fuji X-T4 with a, a 10 to, to uh, what's it? 24 millimeter lens. Oh yeah, L link in the description below. Yes. Link. This is the new Rode uh, microphone. Oh, more affiliate links. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that's the new, that's the new Rode. Yes, uh, the microphone, what is it called? Go2. Right. Go2, yeah. Is the dead cat better on this one? Because on my old version, it constantly falls oh, off. Oh, it's brilliant, check this out. It's like a, you have to twist the oh, whole thing. Oh, yeah. So it's it's in there permanently. Feel that it's, yeah. have a good tug. Do you want me to tug pull. on your dead cat? Have a, have a, good, have a good pull. Oh. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? That's brilliant. I, so I just should just throw my old one away then. You I should. guess that's $250 of trash now, is it then? Yes, now you can spend another $300. Oh, brilliant. That's, oh, that's just, that's economics at work, eh? Capitalism. At its best. Brilliant. You got up here faster than I did. Are you getting in better shape than me? I don't think so. I'm no. worse. You surprised me with how fast you got up here, actually. Well, I'm just walking, hey? Grumpton's gone his own direction. I don't know why he strayed from the path. <laughs> oh, here he comes. It's weird if, you, if you're on this trail and you get disconnected from your fellow hikers, it's like a, a hill of echoes. You can't find them. They sound like they're below you and then the next thing you hear, they're above you. It's kind of weird. But I reckon we have 25 minutes max and we'll be at the top and then the views should open up and then we'll know if we have any chance of getting that shot or if the fog is just too thick. What do you think, love? I think it's going to be great. Look at this big old unit, this beautiful gnarly cedar tree. I thought you were talking about my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Times like this when I wish I had one of those uh, chest mounted GoPro cameras and then I have to keep switching hands because you kind of need your hands to do a proper job of this. But look at this, how gnarly everything is. Everything's so twisty and twiny and, and interesting and gnarly. And I reckon some of that's got to do with the wind. You're gonna, you're gonna try and make me look fit, aren't you? I plan on being fitter next time I go up. You said that last time. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So we're, we're about, ooh, we're almost at the top. And so we, we can just kind of catch a glimpse through these trees of the rest of the coast. And I'm a bit upset to see that it's completely 
covered in fog but that could change it's what four hours till sunset yeah. so fingers crossed i really hope we get to see at least some of it some of the distant mountains i'll have a massive tantrum if we don't <laughs> Ah, there's nothing quite like slogging up a steep and treacherous hill only to discover there's no view from the top. Well, we've made it to the top of the hill and it's just fog. <laughs> but as I said, you know, there's a chance it might clear up. Who knows? There's a few hours between now and sunset. However, there is a plan B, because on the other side of this little hill, there's a view in the opposite direction, out towards the mountains, which I'm hoping isn't subject to the same coastal fog, because it's far off in the opposite direction. So we'll, we'll have a look at that, and that's the plan B. And it's only five minutes over there, so we can keep coming back and checking on this and see if it clears, but that is the exact opposite of what I was hoping for. And uh, failing that, a bit of boudoir, eh? Have you brought you? You brought your leathers. I did. But just around the corner, there was a glimmer of hope overlooking this ancient coastal rainforest. So this is the other side of the hill, and I, I reckon most people who hike up here probably don't go that extra little bit of distance to get this absolutely spectacular view. I love the way that the light's just creeping in to the valley there. And then on either side of the valley, you've got this basically cloud. I think it's a bit more than fog. It's just a low-lying cloud just coming in. It's quite, ooh, quite fantastic. We're nice. You like, ooh, you like it? Since we got here, within just a few minutes, we've been watching these beautiful splashes of light just play through this valley in a really interesting way. So you get these stripes of light and then stripes of darkness where the, the clouds are casting shadow. So I've just been, you know, handheld, just capturing as many shots as I can in the hopes that I can find a, an interesting composition. But the composition is completely governed by the patterns of the light. It, you know, you can frame something up and within 60 seconds, it's completely changed. So by the time I find a composition I like and I want to get the tripod, it's vanished. So these, these might be a little bit blurry, but I think I might be able to get some decent shots. This grand vista made me feel like I was deep in the Amazon rainforest, or maybe even back in prehistoric times. I, I fully expected to witness a fight between a Triceratops and a, a T-Rex. Okay, well, it looks like it might have cleared a little bit back where we started, so let's just go back and see if the view has opened up. And, oh, that is absolutely magnifico. Let me show you this. Finally, the fog was beginning to lift and show off that beautiful coastline. I feel like this viewpoint overlooking Cleethorpes has got to be one of the best viewpoints you could ever get. It's just so perfect. It's so pristine, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you've got these pretty big mountains over here and then all these little islands and then this beautiful beach going way out into the ocean there. Just, it's just gorgeous. And of course, the hope is that all of those mountains and islands that you can see in the distance there, the hope is that they catch a bit of that lovely light, that lovely side light from the setting sun, a nice orange glow. And I'm hoping that enough of the fog or the spray stays in the air so that that too catches that lovely orange glow. In my mind, I'm thinking that I'll go for a really wide panorama. So instead of it being a huge wide angle shot where you, you take in all of this foreground here and then it goes right up into the sky instead of that what i think i would like is just a really long strip that just shows that that coastline the way that it starts really tall and then kind of tapers off into the distance so while waiting for the light let's find out what his royal fossil hood has been up to it's adam's uh, hemorrhoid cushion 
for his oh. for his prolapse. I've got a very sensitive bottom. So what have you been up to? I haven't seen you in uh, a long time. I've just been hanging out in my house, nursing my hair and looking after the cats. Do you do you like <laughs> sit in front of a mirror and just comb it in silence? I do. <laughs> <laughs> just like ruminate. It's not quite long enough yet. No. Are you going to do a man bun? I want to grow a beard and then have it all go up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name for that? What do you call that? Is that a thing? It is now. How's your, how's your jacket? It's not working. Oh, good job, because they're not paying us for this one. <laughs> <laughs> is your battery dead? Check my backside. Amanda is a robot. Amanda is a robot. You yeah. should have carried up the jackery when she could have just plugged into the jackery. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'll show you this. Oh, really, beautiful. It's really nice dishes. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, beautiful. So that's the camera. That's filming me, filming you. So that's that. But then this is what we're looking at over the ocean there. Look at those lovely spots of light. Oh, that's really nice. So you know, Tom did really well with those fan videos. Oh yeah. Like they they were crushing it. I just wondered when you were going to convert yours and what what your plans were because the same van, pretty much. I've already converted it. You've seen my camper. Oh, I, I just assumed you'd want to <laughs> tart it up a little bit. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Some Febreze. <laughs> I don't want to let out too many plans because I, I, I have all these great plans, but I never go through with any of them. I want to see a wood burning stove with a little chimney. Yes, I don't think it's going to work. It looks so cool though. I oh, know. Like, Tom's is all flashy and perfect and it nice would, and everything. It would be really fancy. But it would be nothing compared to yours with just a, a full-blown <laughs> wood stove and smoke. Oh, no. And you're driving down the road, you know, and you can see the flames. <laughs> just brilliant. One way I thought of doing it is getting rid of one of the rear windows and then just putting a, a board up and then having the chimney go out the back window. Yeah. And then when you park, you could add a bit on, like a 10-foot section. Because the chimney has to be a minimum height of four or five feet, I think. Yeah, and you'd have to have some kind of cage so that people can't walk past and burn the their hands it. really hot. Yeah. And it, that van is so small, it would it'd be too hot. You can't turn it down. Once it's hot, you can't turn it down, well, you can, can you? can, but it's... Just put water in. You wouldn't be able to... <laughs> like, <laughs> put it out. I mean, even Jeremy's van, um, truck with the, the, the stove in it, it gets too hot. Because propane's quite damp. It is, it's very humid. You get condensation in there regardless of any heat source, just from two bodies. Especially when we're... <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't put that in. It's a rockin', don't come a knocking. I'm a bit envious of your hemorrhoid pillow. You should get one. I should, how much was it? Mm, 30, 40 bucks. Do you think we're gonna get this shot then? Because, like, we've come up here, we've done some B-roll and all that business. So this is the problem with vlogging, is you, you, you hike, you stop and film B-roll, you build this storyline, and you might not get a shot. You know, it might be a complete bust. But I think sometimes people just like to see where you are. I don't think the shot is... I mean, I like getting shots, but... I did a vlog the other day, I didn't even take one shot for, like, three days. Yeah, that's, that doesn't sound fun. How are you liking your Fuji? I'm a bit, I'm a bit tempted, but I don't like the extra weight. Well, the new one is um, about the size of a DS or a, like a mirrorless. Mirrorless. Have they got a telephoto lens yet? So that is a one to two hundred. Yes. It's quite light, actually. It's not too bad. That's f four. No, five five point six. Well, that's that's rather civilized. I thought it would be crazy. How much is that? Uh, 2,500 rocks. So do you like the lenses then? I do, the lenses are excellent. I might have to put my, uh, the other half of my pants on because I'm getting a bit chilled. Do you want to rub your legs for you? Yeah, would you? Okay, turn the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shenanigans with Grump Master Flash. Just like old times, eh? So after about an hour of waiting, the conditions are getting really tasty again. So it's not quite as sunny as we would like. We would like a bit more light, so it's just a bit more punchy and contrasty, but there's this just absolutely magical amount of low-lying cloud that's drifted in again, slash fog, and it's so gorgeous. So I'm framing up a test shot. I'm getting ready to get my composition just in case the good light happens so that I'm ready to go and I'm in position. But I'm quite hopeful that it's gonna work, it's gonna happen. What do you think, Grumpton? Yes. It's gonna happen. Is it gonna happen? 
it's pretty nice right now. Your viewfinder on your camera is bigger than this camera. That's quite impressive, actually. <laughs> That's a good action you've got there. See this little bit of metal? Yeah. This bit here, guess how much that was? $200. $700. What? What a rip. Yeah, this, that. While pretending to listen to Grumpatius complain about his chronic gas, I managed to sneak in this little moody shot. for a dark and moody process on this image which I think works really well with that ever-changing west coast weather. It's absolutely glorious, I mean look look at these conditions, absolutely fantastic, but that bit of cloud just needs to bugger off because if it does, if it just disappears, all of this will just start glowing gold, be absolutely just unbelievable. <sighs> You tell it. It might. I mean, there is a tiny gap underneath this big old cloud, so you never know. Yeah, you just see it there, this orb. It might creep through almost, but not quite. Eh? How's it going, mate? You getting a you getting a good shot? Oh eh? yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out. Oh, that's that's nice. That, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, you know what else is good? What? It's chasing awe with Gavin Hardcastle. My very first photography book. This is your copy. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Yeah, I just I just wondered if you wanted to read like a little little snippet from there, you know, for the for the audience. Oh, let's have a look here. Yeah. Oh, look, it's got the... Oh, to Grumpton. Thanks for being part of the adventure. Thanks, man. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And there's a foreword by Adam Gibbs. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. I'll read this bit. Oh, I'll, let me just... Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. You ready? Yeah. Gavin will go full force to get the shot. I find it odd, though, that... Gavin will go to great lengths to make a photo happen, but always draws the line at the simple task of digging a hole for a number two. He'll climb a mountain, swim across an ice-crusted stream, endure countless sleepless nights, camp in grizzly country with no compromises, except when it's time to take a plop. It's true. I'm not going to lie. I've only once seen Gavin forced to do his business in the woods, and he was not a happy camper. Which reminds me, you still owe me a lens cloth. There's a link in the description below. Oh, that, it's your, that's your copy. And as you'll see here, Adam is completely overcome with emotion. You think it's going to clear? I think it is. Look, it's clearing. The sun's come out. Well, it's almost time for the sun to go down over the horizon. And we are getting a really gorgeous glow right on the horizon where the sun's going down. But unfortunately, by the time that the light comes in and hits all of these mountains and these islands, it's very, very diffused by all of this low lying cloud. So it's not giving us the color and the contrast that we were hoping for over there. But it's forcing us to make slightly different compositions, kind of as we knew it would in the because nothing's going on over there on those big mountains, but there is some lovely color, texture, and layers over here. That's what we're focusing on now. We're kind of pointing our camera in this direction, more towards the setting sun, and figuring out a spot that's got some lovely shapes, colors, and layers. So I'm, I might do a panorama. Basically what I am doing is I'm kind of shooting lots of horizontal frames with the idea of hopefully getting a panorama but some of those individual frames work as compositions on their own so that's that's what i'm doing is i'm trying to do a dual purpose shot a shot that will work either as single frames or as a stitched pano 
but these colors are just oh man that's just kicking off i think this is working this this panorama slash individual shots the light got really quite special about five minutes ago now it's just eased off as the sun has dropped behind this cloud but it's still quite beautiful so i'll show you what i was working on and then if the shot actually turns out to be any good i'll, I'll show you the finished shot but let me just talk you through this panel and if it doesn't work out you show mine <laughs> So basically the pano is, it's a sweep of this whole area. So I'm going from there all the way into the setting sun. You can just see there. So I may or may not end up using that much of the pano because that is a long shot. That's a very long panorama. But the, the shots that I'm particularly interested in are this one here where you can see this group of islands and then as it pans out further into the background you've got these lovely layers and colours and then if you go a little bit further I love this bit of cloud that's coming in here just behind this island and then of course a bit further and you've got the actual sun setting basically what I'm doing when I'm doing these panos is I look at these vertical lines so I take that shot and then I, I mentally remember where this line sat in the composition so just in the middle of that little bit of land there so I then move this column to match where it just was sitting take that shot and then I memorize the next one so if you see this comes down over this peak of this mountain so I take that shot and then move that over to that column and again memorize where this line is it's halfway through that island take that shot and put this one there and so on and so on until you've got the full the full pano and then I basically just go back and start again because I want to catch different moments I want to catch the perfect moment of light and sometimes you can't tell what that is when you're in the moment shooting your panorama and you're kind of immersed in the, the technical aspect of things so what I like to do is just make sure I don't miss it and just keep on shooting and just do that sweep several times and if you do it enough times you know that you're going to get that peak moment of perfect light and you can choose it afterwards as you do this more and more often though you get better at predicting which moment is the best and in theory you could just wait till that moment and take that shot but i think uh, i think the best of the the light is gone it's it's pretty much over let me show you this i find it amazing how quickly the colors transform into these much cooler tones but let me show you that pano from 10 minutes earlier As I mentioned earlier, this is a wide panorama, so I made sure that some of the individual frames worked as standalone compositions. And this one in particular really worked for me because, well, I'm just a sucker for layers, and it's kind of like a watercolor. How's it going there? Great, yeah. uh, but I think I might need a, a filter, like a... Oh, do you want me to get your filters for you? Oh yeah, thank you. All right, yeah, get your filter. Here, I'll pass it here. So now, there you go. <laughs> Just in all with Gavin Hardcastle. There's a link in the description. Affiliate link down below. No, there's, there's no link for that. It's just, just for this. What a brilliant day we'd had. Who knew that Cleethorpes offered such a wonderful vista? Next stop, Skegness. Well, that is definitely it. It's peaked. The light was quite spectacular, I would say, wouldn't you, Adam, for about five, ten minutes? Yeah, it was good, yeah. It wasn't necessarily exactly where we wanted it, but there still might be a shot out of that, I think. Well, you've probably already seen it, but uh, it's definitely worth the hike up here, I would have thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the hike, um, it's no bother. I mean, it was a bit muddy at the bottom, but it's, it's not bad. So now we've just got to climb back down Ankle Break City. Going to have something to eat, eh? Yeah, we've already got our dinner. What have you got? I've got uh, Indian food. Oh yeah? I'm going to make some rice and uh, Indian food, yes. Are you going to make it? Yes. Oh, well, we'll film that then, eh? Well, it's just in a packet. <laughs> oh, it's boiling a bag? <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's go and see what Grumpton's having for dinner at this delightful highway pullout. Oh, what is it? 
Right, so what you what you got going on here? Well, it's gourmet, navratan korma. Oh, yeah. A vegetable medley in creamy sauce. Creamy sauce. Oh. Sounds good, doesn't it? Living the dream, man. This is luxury. None of that Hilton stuff. Well, I mean, all you need, really, is a, is a Yeti cooler and then a, some sort of jet boil to make hot water and you're, you're in business. And some... Uh, Glen Morange. Glen Morange. One a night, that should do me. How big's the one? One bottle a night. <laughs> hey, you've got a fun pack tonight ahead of you tonight, haven't you? Oh, what's that? Oh, you've, you've got your copy of Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. Yeah? Read a couple of stories from that, will you? Yeah, that'll, that'll really put me to sleep straight away. It's like reading a bad novel. There's a link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, do, you used to have like a, a fairly nice rig at the back and you just had to rip it out, why? Because the lock broke on my van and uh, to replace the lock, the only way they could get it, get to it was from the inside. So I had to pull out all you? So I had to pull out all the stuff from the inside, which Ugh. was a huge hassle because I ended up having to get the, the chop saw out chopping it up because I couldn't undo any of the screws so we couldn't get back there. So this is a temporary this yeah, is a temporary it's rig. Pretty it's pretty ghetto that it is. It looks like I'm living in a you know it looks like I'm bubbles or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that was Ricky. Ricky lives in his car, doesn't he? Bubbles lives in the shed. And then <clears throat> you just get cosy on that bit. The bed's comfortable, yeah. This is all storage. Yeah. The problem with the bed is that it's too high, so my head touches the ceiling. <laughs> so I've got to lower it a bit. And then I'm going to build cabinetry in here, have a runway down, like Tom's. Yeah. And have a, I need a desk. Just get the plans off him. Well, I didn't like the back bit. I'm not sure about that. I mean, Tom did a really great job. Don't get me wrong. He inspired me to do mine. I, mean, I was going to do it eventually anyway, but... Uh, what's your budget? Well, the bumper's going to cost me quite a bit. That's probably going to be a couple of grand. Bloody hell. Just for a bumper. So I'm guessing maybe four grand. Are you going to do solar panels? Nah. Because I've got the solar panels for the Jackery. So I'm just going to use those. Can you, can you rig them up so that they sucking in light while you're out hiking though. Yeah, I could just put one in the dash of the car. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. So Grumpton has uh, kindly shared a, a glass of Glen Morangi with me. A wee dram. A wee dram. What do you think? Uh, I think I must be getting old because I don't mind it. <laughs> it used to, used to make me gag years ago, but I, I actually don't mind it. Tom had one in Iceland that was Bow, Bowman or something. It was quite peaty. Some of them taste very peaty. Do you like that? Well, it didn't at first, but I kind of like the taste after a while. Yeah. Once you <laughs> first. <laughs> you know how bad this is? It's actually got pineapple in, in it, but I can't taste the pineapple. Ugh. Like I had a big chunk of pineapple, but it didn't taste like pineapple. What did it taste like? Just a moist piece of flesh. <laughs> I do like a bit of moist flesh. So the plan is to uh, go back to that same overlook for sunrise, which we're gonna miss because you're not allowed to park in the car park. Oh yeah? Until 6 a.m. It, yeah, it's the tow away time is 11 till 6 a.m. So. I don't think you're waking me up at that time. Probably not, no. A $200 fine. What time's sunrise? It's not until 7.30, is it? Oh, well, we might actually get up there then. If we can get up there in time for sunrise, that'd be pretty good and uh, see what it looks like with the light from a completely different angle. Might be crap, but it might be fantastic. And then come down and have an old man nap. Oh, you've got to have old man naps. Well, we should, when we come down, we should go down that. And yeah, we'll find a good camping spot. Yeah. Go down somewhere where we can have a fire. Yeah. Because that logging road down there says you can camp there, but we're settled now, so. You're going to let me use your toilet tomorrow, eh? What's it worth? 
Well, especially after eating this. Oh, no. It's going to be more than a plop. I think $50 a dump is it's a fair price. How much does it cost to dump? It's free. Is it? Yeah. It's free where we go. In fact, that the worst place that we ever did, the Sandy Dump, was the only one that we ever paid for. I think we paid like $7, and it was terrible. Yeah? But all the free ones are brilliant. The best one is in Lake Louise. It's fantastic. So can you actually rinse the tank out, or...? I'm sure you can, but I've... I've not done that. Didn't you get crusty bits in there? Well, what we do... <laughs> can't believe you're eating a karma while we're talking about crusty bits of poo. But um, what we did is we put some borax and some... I think it was Dawn detergent mm. in there. Filled it full of water while it didn't have any sewage in it. And then just kind of sloshed around, went on a road trip, let it move around. Oh, didn't get all bubbly. Yeah, it got a little bit bubbly. Because uh, when it when it came out, when we did the flush, all you could see was bubbles coming through. But that seemed to clean it out nicely. I guess we've got to do that a few times a year, maybe. Mm. So, so far, so good. So How come you, you have such big text in that book? Because I knew that old geezers like you would be reading it. I can actually read it without my glasses. Exactly, that was the whole point. That, that's by design. <coughs> so just to fill the frame, look like you're getting more for your money. <laughs> How's it going there, mate? You're getting a good shot. That's good. Check yeah. it out. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's good that. You know what else is good? Uh, is chasing ore with Gavin Hardcastle. I just just wondered if you wouldn't mind reading out, you know, a little bit from a page. You know, pick any page you want. Well, what do you want me to read? Well, you know, just. Uh, I'm sure you'll find something interesting in there. How about the forward? Yeah, it's by Adam Gibbs, some local photographer. Yeah, you'd probably enjoy that. Just a, just a bit of it though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Oh my God. <laughs> the writing's pretty big, actually. That's the yeah, I made it big for you. Let me just put my glasses on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can read that. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Endure countless sleepless nights, camp in the grisly country with no compromises except when it is time to take a plop. It's true. <laughs> it's actually true. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's your copy that, I, I, it's all yours. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I did a little special inscription for you. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the best bit, obviously, because yeah. the shots are kind of mediocre at best. But... Yeah, thanks, man. Link in the description below. There's a link in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, mate? That looks, that looks like a really good shot. Yeah, could you, could you pass me, um, could you pass me a filter? Yeah, what, which one do you want? Um, polarizer. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I'll just pass you all of them and then uh, you can just choose whichever one you want. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Except when it's time to take a plop.